When 46-year-old Todd Pierce's life ended in a fiery car crash 18 months ago, I like to remember him that way. It was only the beginning of a lengthy battle for his family over the accidental death insurance policy provided by his employer. Despite an official ruling that it was an accident, the insurance company MetLife claimed it was suicide and refused to pay the $224,000 claim for a death they claimed was the result of intentionally self-inflicted injury. It wasn't even about the money. It's about an allegation. How can you say that about somebody? You know, how can you say they took their own life when they've you know, been such a survivor. A survivor, she says, because Todd had recently beaten cancer and was planning for the future. She sued MetLife and was finally awarded the money a year after her husband's death. But according to an investigation by correspondent David Evans published in this month's Bloomberg Markets magazine, many life insurance beneficiaries whose claims are denied never see a dime. You have to wonder how many people just throw up their hands, give up, and, and, and walk away. Evans says the odds are stacked against consumers when an insurance company decides not to pay. You don't have access to, to cross-examine the witnesses that the life insurance company um, uses to determine whether or not to pay you. And basically, the life insurance company uh, makes the determination on its own. That's because a federal law called ERISA, designed to protect employee benefits like pensions, also protects insurance companies. It preempts state law on insurance and denies consumers both jury trials and punitive damages if they challenge an insurance company in court. The life insurance company doesn't need to have a lot of evidence, just a little bit, to justify their decision not to pay out. In a written statement, the insurance company says the Bloomberg report grossly distorts the facts that insurers paid $59 billion to life insurance beneficiaries in 2009, the last year with complete statistics, and less than 1% of life insurance claims are disputed. Still, some denials raise questions. It's an absolute emotional roller coaster. And then there's the case of Ernest Lone, who died in a fall down the stairs of his home in 2006 after drinking three glasses of wine. Prudential refused to pay his wife Mimi the $300,000 accidental death policy, saying Lone was drunk by state standards for driving under the influence. His wife sued and was finally awarded the money last November. I think the most disturbing part of this process was that I thought my insurance was going to protect me, like most consumers do. For some consumers, the grief over a loss is compounded by a legal battle over benefits denied. Don Teague, CBS News, Dallas.